The poet William Wordsworth said, there was no holier name we could call God than Father. Our next storyteller hopes to someday also be honored with the title of Father. <coughs> Nicholas Brown describes himself as a hip hop renaissance man and also a bit of a player who once made a girl walk home from the movies because she was being a brat. <laughs> we asked Nicholas if he believed in God and he said, I plead the fifth. I need a lawyer before I answer any more questions. Here to tell us his story, Furious, Nicholas Brown. When I was a kid, my only real father figure was Furious Styles. Furious was a character from the hood movie classic, Boys in the Hood. Back when Larry Fishburne wasn't known as Lawrence, he was Furious. Furious was the only father in the movie, but commanded respect. He was knowledgeable, and when he spoke, people listened. He's the one man I want to emulate in terms of being a father when my time comes. I grew up in Liberty City and Carroll City, two towns where a decent father was a luxury. When I was four, my mom dated Clifford, an ex-infantryman who saved his pay stipends and opened a car wash in Liberty City in the, in the 1970s. Clifford was a large root beer brown man with a Santa Claus-like beard, body, excuse me, and a beard that matched his size. He smelled like mentholated cigarettes and polo cologne. <laughs> Clifford took us to the movies and the Dade County Fair. We even went to Bush Gardens when I was seven. We took photos, which made us look like a fake ass nuclear family. <laughs> <laughs> We'd hang at his house, which was way cool due to his huge collection of cartoon movies. You name it, Clifford had it. Mighty Mouse, Popeye, Superman, Batman, The Flash, Spider-Man, and even X-Men. He only stayed around until I was eight, but for a while, Clippy Baby was the man. After Clifford, my mom started talking to Tony, my sister's father. Tony was a, a Jamaican coke dealer who looked like Louis Farrakhan. I liked Tony because he, was, he always gave me 20 and 100 and even $100 bills. It made me feel like a mini stripper. <laughs> but I thought, I, I thought about all I could get from the ice cream truck and took the money. My brother and I weren't his kids, but we were always welcome at his house to chill, eat, and watch movies on his mega big screen TV. Tony was in the picture for about four years. Then in 1999, he got sent to to federal prison. These two men were good in their own ways. They were nice to my mother, thus cool in my book, but they weren't my dad. My dad left when I was one. I have a picture of him where he's leaning against the wall. He's from the Bahamas with an Africanized skin tan, but native Tamil features. All I know about my dad is that he didn't come after us when we moved to Miami. I could have used the dad walking to school when we stayed in Liberty City and walked by men selling whatever product. I could have used the dad to have someone to talk to about why girls came at me with harsh words like African booty scratcher and oil streak. <laughs> Hurtful moments like this made me lean toward being a player in life. Having one night stands and kicking the women out of, excuse me, one night stands and kicking the women out with a smile became second nature. Pimps and Max, drug dealers and goons were substitute father figures in the poor sides of towns. Our perceptions of their success made us think that's how you got money, power, and respect. And I wasn't any different. Though I managed to stay out of the graveyards, prison, and jail cells, 
that housed those I grew up with. There were moments in my life where I was one phone call or one road trip away from being in a bad situation. I could have used the dad to teach me to drive. Me and my boys learned to drive on our own when I was 13. We stole the keys out of my grandma's top drawer and used the screwdriver to, to wedge <laughs> the, the door open on my uncle's old Datsun. We never got out of second gear, but we thought we were cool. <laughs> I would have loved to have my dad there to see me graduate from high school. And just this August, it would have been nice to show off to my dad when I graduated college. Since before I was born, my mom and grandma worked, so my siblings and I figured out the major things out ourselves. Stuff like the birds and the bees, and how to keep three dudes from jumping you. <laughs> the rest I learned from Furious. He exuded confidence and imparted knowledge upon his son Trey. And through the TV, he taught me. Furious taught me about safe sex, how any fool can have a baby, but a real man is a father. He taught me how to be responsible. Added awesomeness came when he unloaded his 357 Magnum at a man who broke into his home. I don't say that because I like violence. That scene actually showed me to never purposely inflict harm on anyone. But if I must bust my gun to keep a motherfucker out of my house <laughs> and my family safe, then pray for the fool who comes to my house on the nights. <laughs> <laughs> Furious was of the ghetto, but never let it corrupt his moral compass. Furious gave me someone to look up to. He made me want to break the cycle of black males, of black males not being fathers. My brother is breaking the cycle with my niece. My uncles and older cousins are breaking their cycles as well. I don't have any children yet, but thanks to these men and to Furious, I will fulfill my own pledges. I pledge to take my kid to school from day one until I'm told it's not cool, Dad. <laughs> I pledge to see the first steps, birthdays, and of course graduations. I pledge that I will teach my child how to drive. I pledge to teach my young to be better than I was. I always heard that mother is the first teacher and father is the first hero. I want to be a hero. <laughs>